everyone, and welcome to episode 4 of Let's Talk Food. And I'm Steph Ronaldo, lifestyle entertainment and food reporter for Rappler. And in today's episode, we are going to be talking about the current state of the Philippine food and restaurant industry. So just in a snapshot, what's happening now? Because uh, late 2020, we have been, well, Metro Manila has been under GCQ, so general community quarantine. So our restaurants were able to accept dine-in customers already as compared to just the takeout and delivery at the start of the lockdown. So this actually helped many businesses stay afloat, keep their staff, maybe even break even or recover from last year's losses. However, 2021 has seen a sudden surge of COVID-19 cases and new restrictions were recently enforced. So a couple of weeks ago, uh, this new brand of GCQ banned indoor dine-ins, but Al Fresco was allowed. But that was just for a few days because due to the still rising cases, an enhanced community quarantine was implemented again. And now restaurants have reverted to just takeout and delivery. So these in- this includes restaurants in the NCR plus bubble, which are Metro Manila, Rizal, Bulacan, Laguna, and Cavite. So what we want to talk about today is what does this really mean for our local restaurants again, who were just about to gather their bearings from last year's losses. So what are their game plans now? So for today, I'm very excited to announce our two special guests. So we have Chef Ed Gioff, Pino, Pipino, Mimi and Bros, The Burger Project, and Five Breakfast and Pies. Hello. <laughs> and then Hello. we also have David Ong as the curator, Ed's the beverage design group, and you know who at the grid. So thank you for joining us today, David and Ed. Hello. Yes. So as restaurant owners, I'm sure you guys have a lot of thoughts about what's currently happening. But first, um, for everyone's reference, could you tell us a bit more about what you're currently doing now? What are your current projects? What are you handling at the moment? Chef Ed, you can go first. I have two types of ano, no, uh, parang day jobs. No, one is as a restaurant owner. So that's the Pino Group in the Maginhawa area. Malingap Street, to be more specific. And then my other day job is I'm I'm head of FNB for a private equity group, which is the MFT group. That is the owner of ano, uh, Mimi and Bros. Because I'm part of that equi- private equity group, I have ano, I, I I could see what's happening in other countries because we have brands there also. Mm-hmm. We own master franchises for two brands in particular, which is uh, La Lola, Chureria in Singapore, and Salad Stop in Vietnam. So it's kind of tough because I, I keep on comparing my Manila stuff to what I see in other countries and especially these two countries which have I know, really controlled the virus really well you know, um, through leadership. Now, when you say leadership, um, it's just really them wanting to... They, they know what they want. They know how they have to do it. And it's been doing well for the F&B industry there. My restos there the ones that i handle have been performing great no um there was a thing in singapore called a circuit breaker uh, but when they did that circuit breaker there was a lot of parang government subsidy i i uh they even paid 75 percent of salaries of all of the fnb you know employees there so it was really easy for us to you know kumbaga makabangon a lot there you know uh, yeah. in singapore especially um, in Vietnam also, uh, the cases were very low. But even if the cases were like, kunare, one positive a day, ganun lang, you would see everyone in the streets, diba, uso dun yung scooter and motorcycles. Everyone was still wearing masks. So they knew, parang top of mind, well, the virus is still here. Even if it's just one or two, it might be underdeclared. Might as well wear masks. So yun know, ang kagandaan nun. So I get, I get an overview of what's happening there. So here... It's tough because, because my two restaurant groups here naman, Mimi and Bros and then the Pino group, uh, mall base, semi-mall base, it's a utility mall eh, where Mimi and Bros is. It's not a lifestyle mall in front of the football field no, in BGC, 32nd Street. We call that a utility mall kasi wala namang ano din eh, wala kang 
parang walang shopping, it's all food. Yeah. No, that that two story building. And then in Malingap naman, non mall. So hirap because the bigger problem there is my landlords are also SMEs. Mm. So if they're also SMEs, that means they're affected also. They can't exactly give me rent relief. That means they're losing income too. Yeah. So yun, it's tough. It's tough to balance uh this. But you know, uh, the theme for twenty twenty was just survive. 2021 was supposed to be how to, uh, how to thrive. It was, yeah, <laughs> how to thrive. That was our exact term in our ano, business plan. How to thrive during the pandemic. Eh, ngayon, paano ko magta-thrive? Lockdown again. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So, yeah, that's for me. Thank you. For you, David, how has it... Yeah. Actually, I just wanna, wanted to add like what Ed said because like, in Singapore, I don't know if you know, but hospitality industry, meaning... The people in hotels, people in F and B, and whatnot, are actually considered as prioritized citizens for vaccines, whether they're actually local to Singapore or not. So, you know, I have a lot of friends na bartenders, the um We go on guest shifts abroad and stuff like that, and like and like we see all these things, all these trends. Bars are tough; they're hit hard, the because because technically here, bawal pa rin yung bars, and you know, understandably so, and it's the same way all over the world but in Singapore they're prioritized so you know after senior citizens is actually them right away like together I, I, that's enough after sorry frontliners senior citizens and then it's them right away then later on the general public so wala lang. I just wanted to share that little thing anyway so hi everyone my name is David so by profession I'm actually a barista and a bartender but I so happen to own a few concepts here in Manila so one is called Ed's a Beverage Design Group. This is where we have YKW Roasters, um, where we roast coffee, we do consulting, training workshops and stuff for coffee. So And then we also like uh, bottle different beverages that we make. So it's more of like B2B, RTD, that kind of stuff, which we implement in what you mentioned earlier, which is YKW Roasters at the Grid, which is in Rockwell. It's, you know, it's part of like this um, social food court, if you would call it. Um, and... And we recently also opened on Street Side, uh, which is like uh, the grid and also Rockwell's effort to, you know, like um, encourage people to dine in, but al fresco. And then you mentioned also the Curator Coffee and Cocktails, which is in the Gatsby Village, which is a specialty coffee shop in front. Then we have our cocktail bar in the same space at the back. Then I actually have another place called Otto. Uh, it's called Otto because it's just sound in Japanese, so it's actually a listening room which is located in Poblacion, but it's also a cafe, a bar, and a restaurant. Actually, it's more cafe and bar, but then we have food, but as in a full-on kitchen. Then I also help out with this brand, um, this Philippine gin called Art Gin, so Full Circle Craft Distiller. So dealing with them, it's quite different, just because for Ed's BDG, for example, it's kind of like business as usual, like um, except for Skeletal Force right now. We continue to roast coffee. We continue to produce our RTDs. These are pre-ordered, by the way. So usually like Thursdays uh, or actually the whole week, we are able to take pre-orders. Then Monday, Tuesdays, like today, we're able to do production. And then we dispatch Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. So it's kind of business as usual. But it's not the same because businesses are closed. Um, and much like last year, you know, like a B2B, well, it was down we had like a massive surge in B2C, business to consumer. So people, um, what that means is that people are brewing coffee a lot at home, like Ed, <laughs> for example. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that was a nice surprise for us. Because like before, it was like B2B mataas, it was B2C So it's a, it's a, it's not okay, but you know, it's doing better than the others. Um, the curator, we, uh, we recently had to close uh, because of GCQ. So MECQ, the whole week we're open. Sorry, not GCQ. ECQ, we closed for one week until Easter Sunday. And then when we realized that this is going to take you know, a little bit longer, we decided to open up for takeout, um, uh, for curbside pickup, and also for deliveries. Uh, Otto rem- remains to be closed, together with YKW Roasters, actually, at the grid, both indoor and outdoor, both you know, um, the grid and street side. So, yeah, there's not, not much to share, unfortunately. Like, um... We're just really trying to navigate our way around this. But a lot of it has to do with, of course, like the easing of regulations. But at the same time, you know, we want to be responsible. Uh, the ease, I guess that like, case is decreasing as well. 
Yeah. Okay. So um, this was this is current your current state. That's the current state, and also the the venues under me and what we're what we're up to. All right. So yeah. When the first ever lockdown last year was implemented, yeah. uh, could you take us through just kind yeah, of sure. an overview? Of, yeah. Like, did you close down? Did yes. you have to okay. deliver operations? Yes. You can yeah, go ahead. Absolutely. Uh, so last year, yeah, March 15. So, so no? it's like exactly one year. Know, happy anniversary. Right? Happy anniversary. Talaga. Yeah. Um, and at that time, we probably had like less than a thousand cases a day, was it? I can't remember, no? But like a thousand was high or very high. Already. Yeah, that was high already before. So yeah. I remember the day before uh, that we had to close down. It was March 13. I was in the curator and I was like panicking because like, parang, ala, like, I'm supposed to leave for Palawan March 22 to 25 for a friend's wedding. So I already called Skyjet and like, parang, you know, it's like, it's, it's fine, Skyjet. And then, and then yeah, like, parang, I was saying, oh, maybe, I, you know, I can. I was trying to rebook, rebook the flight or cancel it or whatever, but because I was already sensing that they were gonna, because of all the news that they were gonna lock down. So true enough, like, a few hours after lockdown, the and like, parang, we didn't really know what that meant. Um, you know, was it gonna be for like two weeks, a month, or two months or three months? Nobody knew, the It was just open ended, much like it is right now. Uh, if you remember, like, parang, what it says is. Oh, it's extending for at least another week. Um, and that's how it felt then. Except at least then, you know, like parang we were not alone. You know, it was a global pandemic. Everybody didn't know what to do. Everybody was kind of scrambling. And, you know, everybody thought, okay, maybe this is the best. We just close, follow the government and the parang the regulations and stuff. And like um, and we had to close. So March, April, and May, we, we were closed. Um for all the venues. And then June is when we started to uh, to operate. So at first it was Ed's BDG because it's b 2 b and we didn't really need any face-to-face. It was all production. And then we started doing you know, takeout, dining, and curbside pickup at the curator. Auto came a lot later, um, which was around August, I believe, or September, uh, as well as the grid. Um, and then when dining, pick- when dining was allowed, this was around... August, I believe, July, August, 50% capacity with the other regulations of um, contact tracing, health declaration form, alcohol, reminding clients to wash your hands. Uh, that's when we it kind of started to like, okay, well, um, now we're talking, we can do something because, you know, when you talk about like sales between, how do you say it, like just take out dining and curbside pickup, it's really, really, really little compared to dine-in sales, especially for a place like ours. So, yeah, like, um, that went on for a while and we noticed sales picking up, picking up. And then, you know, 2021 comes, uh, there's news of the vaccine, which is already, you know, like, technically it was supposed to be lang eh, April, diba? Like, that's when they said it's going to arrive and, and whatnot. But, you know, surprisingly, like, uh, some LGUs, um, which is a great surprise, by the way, have already started administering the vaccine. So, Technically, we're ahead of schedule, but diba, parang this happened. Cases increased to an all-time high. Um, you know, I definitely get that we had to close down um, again for ECQ, but now that it's you know open-ended, parin, like it's just a bit worrisome. So, you know, I'm pretty sure that it's not just me and it's not just Ed that parang just you know we. I hate I hate this term, eh? Like people say. Pivot, 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 develop. Basically, it means just to adjust your business from what it was to, you know, how it could be in this new normal. Um, I think we've exhausted all this pivoting. Like, um, it's um, I, I, again at the at the end of the day, this boils down to um, good governance um, and just like really uh, doing something during this ECQ period. Like, instead of us just sitting down here at home waiting. Um, you know, for better news in, in Rapper or Inquirer or whatever, oh, it's 8,000 cases, 12,000. It's good. Then, like, literally, oh, that's how I am now. I'm like, okay, it's 8,000. Okay, not bad. Like, yesterday was 12,000. I wonder what it's going to be today. But that's literally how I think now. Because, like, parang, all you can wish for at this point is for, you know, mass vaccination. And I, I, I do see some effort, but, like, I wonder if it's good enough. That's it. 
Yeah. So it's it's a question mark at this point. Like um from when it was like a question mark in the beginning to when we saw some not like clarity but some some progression like later on in the year and then in the new year like um you both mentioned like maybe, you know how can we thrive in, during a pandemic so just going back to square one it's pretty tough for sure like we you know we haven't given up uh but it's it's just a it's just a tough one yeah for you chef ed how was how were your restaurants then and um What are, what is the timeline for that? It was pretty much the same. The same. Uh, I think I think the whole F&B industry had to go through the same ups and downs. We were a bit up no ano uh, what we call this during the burn month. Especially uh, some of my restos also did offer alcohol. We yeah. we even coined an internal term for it. Um, <laughs> re- re- revenge spending, parang ganon, parang revenge mm. drinking also. People were like giggled to drink. So they say, "Okay, kait two bottles lang yan. Kait we have a curfew at 10 p.m. We had the curfew because eh, we were an mm-hmm. outdoor resto, so we couldn't stay open till late. Parang people would order a lot of alcohol para lang maubos na within the time span, no? Um, so I said, "Okay, our our sales are doing okay, and shampre when you drink you eat. So people are ordering food again. So the burn months were okay. I mean." Um, not enough to say, hey, we 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 turned a nice profit, no, for the restos. But during these bear months, it was enough for us to at least onte onte, ano, pagipuna na yung thirteenth month of our employees, because by law, de ba, we were still required to give it. And I understand, I understand. I mean, I'm an employee too. I understand the importance of a thirteenth month. And then we had to also start saving up money to pay for the ano. Di ba nagkaroon tayo ng big debt because of the Bayanian Act? The Bayanian yeah. Act said, oh, don't pay now. It's okay. <laughs> But when you're allowed to pay na, they would say, okay, you have to pay times two. Utang. You didn't pay last yeah. month. In utang pala. <laughs> utang pala. No one knew it was that way. Everyone thought oh, it was canceled. Oh, no. Yeah, I'll be honest. So no one knew it. It was even the car loans. Car loans would say, hey, yeah, Bayanian yeah, Act. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Car loans, my, housing loans. My interest. Loan. Yeah. <laughs> Exactly. My interest, like, this, accrued this interest is what they called it. Accrued interest. Exactly. I remember. This, I said, ang intindi namin lahat, you're just gonna move everything by a month. Kumbaga, uh, March or April ba yan was yeah. cancelled. No, or like smart. They did. Like, phone, like they diba? spread out like the amortizations. But yeah, yeah. I, I understand. That, 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 that's so yeah. annoying when they started calling us back the bank. Oh. Uh, we'll charge you now, times two. Uh, we, were, we were like, oh, oh wait. <laughs> so, hirap. Ang hirap. That's yeah. what happened. So, the burn months were great. January, Feb. Eh, parang nagkakaroon ka ng signs of life. No, uh, Parang, oh, wow. Parang, oh, wow. Oh, Valentine's. It was pretty, not good, not great, but, you know, it's yeah. okay. And okay right now, when you say okay, that's good enough na eh. Right yeah. now. Um, that was like 2,000 cases pa baba. Nang yes. December to February yes. to to like less than 1,000. So is it safe to say that this yes. was like the turning point na where you felt stable? Parang your business was sort of stabilizing. Like I wanted to ask stabilizing you. in the sense that you know we could pay for our rent. Na yeah. We didn't have to you know, you know, ask you know the landlord for like 50 percent off or hey can you yeah. consider like giving us like um hmm. some terms? Exactly. Um, stable in the fact that. You know, parang we're able to give more shifts to our employees, but not yes. full shifts like before, na hundred percent. But then also, like parang, well, like, they also didn't move ano, ah, by the way, um, tax filing. <laughs> so it's still April yeah. 15. Yeah. So we still yeah. have to save for that as well. And you know, parang we renewed all our business permits and stuff like that. So it's stable in a sense that we're able to, you know, like parang not only stay afloat but stay alive. You know, mm. yeah. Ganun. Like, yeah. but not, but not like, like, hey, I think, I think there's gonna be a, you know, it's not like, hey, I don't, I don't think we're gonna turn in a, pro- I think we're, we're gonna turn in a profit like this year. It's not like that. It's still yeah. like 2020 mindset na parang it's mm-hmm. still surviving. Uh, just trying to get better, you know, throughout the months and just really trying to take care of our people. So stable in that sense, but not like parang we can now we can forecast sales. Um, from day to day to the next week. Because yeah. 
umiiba talaga eh. Umiiba. Mm-hmm. I don't know. For that's for us at least. Yeah, it's it's you know, that's true. It's true though. Um we we we're, we're having a hard time uh planning. That's why I was so annoyed when they said we'll take it uh per week, no? Week by yeah. week, yeah. you know, uh, the government I said, ask, I said is that enough for a restaurant? It's always that is not enough. That's yeah. not enough. Sana, I mean, honestly, yeah. sana they just said na parang hey, like one month tayo lock oh. on ECQ. Then oh. at least we can like okay, talk to our landlords and you know it's easier to say hey can we can we have some help that like parang we're going to be closed for a month no business um as supposed to like this now week per week but parang it's 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 that's just one aspect by the way like and there's also like Ed said planning for for when we do reopen and stuff like that yeah I was so it, it's, ask, eh. it's it's amazing parang what what is involved when a uh, lockdown is about to be enforced, what is involved? Like, it's not just your staff. You're thinking logistics. You're thinking rent. Like, yeah. Why? Why is it? Yeah. What is? What can a month do for you guys to help adjust to the restrictions? For us, it's in, in yeah, like uh, most of our most of our landlords, because they are like men, Ed mentioned SMEs, except for Rockwell. So Rockwell, amazing. You're amazing, talaga. Basically, if they we're are. not open then we don't have to pay rent. That's the great thing about a mall. But the thing about with like um, SMEs, like um, Ed said, is that you know, it's privately owned. Um, so, you know, like they can only bend so much as well because who knows, maybe they have the space on a mortgage as well and they have to pay for the fees. Uh, so it's, it's just really going back to that. Like, um, and it's just, that's just one aspect. Huh? This is rent. So it's, it's, when you say one week, it's like, okay, well, then there's a chance that it'll open next week or the third or the fourth or whatever. But when you say one month we're closed, it's easier to present it, you know, as a uh, to to the landlord and just say, hey, like we have zero sales, literally. I mean, there's nothing we can do. It's out of our hands. Versus like week to week now we're umaasa kami sa like parang, <laughs> you know that uh, the announcements and stuff like that. So that's in that sense. And then for the staff, naman like shampre, it's sila, um in F and D most staff work. Um, for daily wages, basically, and service charge and tips. You know, it's not on a salary in a, per month. Eh. It's a, a lot of a, a lot of establishments work na no work, no pay. So, if it's one month, come in. Like what we do is we um, out of our pockets give allowance. So it's like a thousand pesos a week for the staff. So it, it's it's just malasakit na lang. But like, parang if you know we didn't have that, na, parang aasa sila eh, na parang okay maybe next week. Love shifts again, diba? Versus if it's a month, at least they too can prepare for it. Diba? Like, parang, okay, budgeting and stuff like that. It, it's, it's, it, there's many aspects to it. Like, that's not just for the business or in particular. But I would say there's a huge difference in planning. Like, when you say one week, it's like, we'll wait and see. But at the same time, at least for me, at the back of my head, I'm thinking, ah, extend it in a month. So I'm already planning for the extension. Versus a month where it's like parang isang hulugan, like parang it's just easier to plan things. I, I, I know it's vague, but um, there's a lot of factors that go into it for sure. Because we're not just thinking of the business itself, but also our, our colleagues. Yeah. yeah. For you, Chef Ed, it's the same. Yeah, it's the same. And also, we have uh, an added step where we have a full restaurant. No? So uh, mm-hmm. when, when you have a restaurant, you also have to think of your stocks. So mm. what do you do? Like you have, you have, yeah, yeah, you have produce. Eh. Okay, lang sa nako it's all meat. You can freeze it fine, but sometimes you don't like doing that either. But yun yeah, like yung magulay, the lettuce. What do I do with it? Uh, parang napapaano kami na lang. Not even employees say eh. we just give it to the employees. Oh, bring home the gulay. Mabubulok lang den yun eh, de ba? And and a lot of people they say, I, I I hate it when I hear na they try to sermon you na. Oh, you guys weren't able to pivot to delivery, to take out, to pick up, maganyan. I'm like, you know, to be honest, not all restaurants are designed like that. Unless you're a pizza restaurant, de ba? Yeah. Or or de ba? Your pizza, you're built for delivery. Um, a lot of restaurants are not built that way. So people have to understand. Uh, as much as we we are available, we do it. We we we're on all these aggregators that charge. An arm and a leg. Thirty percent, twenty percent. Yeah, I mean, they charge an arm and a leg, but we're there because we understand we have to play the game that we have to be available for delivery. 
we can't ask them to lower their rates either as much as we want to because there's already a uh, ano, uh, historical basis that sometimes it doesn't work if it's too low. Like, see, ano Honest B. Diba? They have to leave uh, the yeah. 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 and shut down. So if we keep on telling them, hey, babaan yung rate nyo, eh, baka mawala naman sila. And they are an integral part of our day-to-day lives right now, no, these delivery aggregators. So these, these are the other factors aside from, tama, even with the employees kami, naawa kami ah, kasi um, what can we do? Diba? There, we have another business that's a commissary also. So we provide food for like uh, mga outlets like uh, yung mga sa gas station. Diba? Um, I won't name na lang the brands, but you know, several gas stations or all of these, ano, um, sorry, like 7-Eleven na lang. Yeah, I'll name the brand. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Ano, yeah those, those outlets. Yun, there you go. Oh my God. Uh, convenience stores. So we, we supply food to convenience stores, diba? several convenience stores. And with the ECQ again, the center, they don't have business either. There are no cars going out to make pagas. Yeah. There, there's Wala no one budget. out there. Wala budget. So they don't order food from us. So yun? They Even the commissary that we have, it's a huge commissary. It's like a whole warehouse. We can't do anything. Diba? Even the restaurants who order from us because we supply gelato. We have really good gelato. How will they order gelato from us if they're closed? Diba? Yeah. So it's a lot of factors that people don't see na parang, oh, sige, kung hindi kami, what, of our, uh, no, what about the other businesses? And we can't be selfish naman and keep on you know, announcing to the world na, ay, naku, kawawa FNB, kawawa FNB. I've heard of, ano eh, worse horror stories sa ibang industries like retail. No one buys clothes. Everyone's just home. Diba? I haven't bought a shoe in a year. <laughs> a new pair of shoes. Diba? So... Yun. Guilty These ako. The... <laughs> Retail therapy ako. <laughs> the greater therapy ka. Ako, ano lang, uh, rubber, rubber sandals. Chanelas from... lang. <laughs> Chanelas. Uh, so, yun. Okay. So, yeah. Th- those are the other factors also that come into play. Okay. But I just wanted to raise a point lang there. Like, um, so for those of you who are actually listening to the show, um, it's really better if you buy directly from the cafe, from the restaurant. Yeah. As opposed okay. to buying from Grab, from Food Panda, mm. etc. Now you, I know it's a tedious process of like having to order GCash, bank transfer, or whatever, and then book your own Grab or have it picked up. But it really, you know, you're giving back 20, 30 percent of the profits. So Actually, it, it's 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 a huge thing, a I very huge ask, thing. I wanted to ask about that. Now yeah. we're back to just takeout and delivery operations, and I wanted yeah. to know mm-hmm. if this is really enough to sustain. Or are the percentages of takeout and delivery bigger? Like, as you mentioned, dine-in orders mm. really do make a big difference. And now, Huge difference. straight to the business itself. So, yeah. Could you just, like, people want to know, it. eh? Yeah. Um, um, all right. So, the question, just to summarize again, is, like, is there really a difference between takeout deliveries and also, 30, or, and also dine-in, right? That is the question. Yeah. Parang, for us, absolutely. I mean, first and foremost, we are, again, I have to remind you that we are a cafe and a bar that serves food. And technically, bars are not allowed to open. But, you know, we are able to because we have a cafe and restaurant license. And so long as we follow the rules, which we do, which is to serve food and um, provide the maximum of two drinks per person, then we're okay. We're in the clear. Uh, you know, we follow with everything. Dine in. We have, you know, if you look, if you Google curator and see our recent pictures or whatever, you'll see acrylic dividers everywhere you'll see like um a barrier that you know blocks you before enterings where we can like uh, process you if you would call it and stuff like that and we only do 30 percent capacity not even 50 percent because we are a tiny space so 30 percent of like you know, we only accept 12 people in at a time so that means that you'd have to have high turnover but thankfully for i'm only speaking for curator um it thankfully though like the turnover is pretty decent and also people are still ordering takeouts, takeout for them because these are the people that don't feel comfortable dining in, which is okay. It's up to you. Eh? So it's good. You know, like our, I would, it's not like before, na parang, I would say if I were to compare pre-pandemic sales to the sales now, it's not even 30%. It's not even 50%. I would say. It's more 30, 30%, but it's not even 50%. That's for sure. Yeah. Um, but 
because you know we're able to it's all malas sa kita talaga eh. like talk to our landlords and again I'm only talking about creator our landlord has been amazing you know like um whenever something like this happens they give us rent relief for fifty percent off uh, it's still expensive but you no know, we're able to meet it with um with with take out um curbside pickup and delivery sales naman I mean we just opened like this week like this 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 Sunday sales have been okay it's just that when you add in like oh how many staff is working today. You know, before, because we tried to give out as much shifts, right? Like it's like five people working at in during in one time, one admin, two co- two coffee, then two for the bar. If kailangan, but the thing is, right now there's still liquor bans everywhere, so we technically we don't need the two bartenders, the right? Like, parang you only need three staff, admin, and then the two coffee. But then how do you how do you say that to the guys? You know, we have to mix and match and stuff like that. We have to lessen shifts. That's where it hurts, eh? And you know, like um. We're able to sustain it for the month, but then, you know, it's a bigger picture. How about again? I go back to this all the time. How about our colleagues? But like, how do we help them? So, you know, it's it's been tough. Like, um, and you know, not everybody has the same story. Like, for example, one I'm still also talking about creator. Like, one of our colleagues, her parents and her sister got COVID. They're in. They're based in Cavite. They're isolated there. They're doing okay, but. You no, know, she's the she's right now. She's the breadwinner. You know, like she's the one buying their medicine, sending it to them via Grab and stuff like that. You know, she's had to have she's she's had to borrow money from us, the balik, because like her daily wage is not enough anymore. The balik, even if let's say she's not working and we give her allowance, one thousand pesos a week, the ba divided by seven, like what's what is that? It's like one coffee a day. It's it's not enough, the balik. So it's that's parang we we make hard decisions like um. Just to stay alive, but then it's a bigger picture, talaga. There's a lot more at stake, not for the business per se, but like just um everybody involved. Everybody, yeah, yeah. Because yeah. yeah. I understand that because because yeah. we are a but but we are a first world industry, like kami yeah, for are. specialty coffee, co- craft cocktails. We're very first world. Yeah. Who needs that? But like, parang I I mean, people need coffee for sure. But I mean, it's 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 not like medicines or whatever but still like these people are humans they have their own problems um i mean and it's and they, and they have to make ends meet it, that's the that's the <laughs> that's the bottom but the bottom line i think that that's what i was gonna say there's a very human aspect to this that people don't understand Be, people always say parang na attack masyado rin yung ano, the industry as a whole na parang yeah oh, dining in man, uh, yeah the dining in they're like oh y- mamimili kayo lives or economy it's always that di ba the, yeah, how do you balance that yeah. Yeah. yeah people don't understand when we pick economy it's not to make money uh, we're not these money grabbing grabbing yeah. ano eh yeah. uh, uh, people it's more we it's want not greed yeah it's not greed we're not making money at all people have to understand that We're losing yeah. money, and it's not we want to open to to stop losing money. We want to open because of the human aspect. It's our employees. Uh, pe- people don't understand that. I think, no. Mm. Um, we have to keep our people employed because they're the ones who are most nangangailangan. They're the ones who yeah. who live in areas who are not as sheltered as us. Uh, they, they we're, we're, they're, they're less privileged. We're, we're more yeah, privileged. They're less privileged. For sure. Yeah, I mean, so paano pag may magkasakit? Sabi nila, um, sir, kaya nga mga ano, uh, pang tulong lang, pang gamot, eh how? Diba? Yeah. I mean, saan ka may bubunan? Yeah, yeah. 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 off your pocket. Yeah. Ganun. Ganun talaga. Yeah. yeah. But so, just, and I'm sure you guys know this, and definitely this number has increased. Ever since lockdown last year, 4.5 million Filipinos have lost their jobs, diba? From yeah, SMEs. Yeah. I think it's increased now, but like that's something I read long recently. So for us, like um, we have not let go of anyone. Like uh, we're just really trying to keep everyone on board until you know we kind of have a sense of where this is going, and you know we try to take care of them the best way that we can. Like it's it's it, that that's been our strategy from from day one, talaga. And you know it's a good thing that. Everybody buys into it because they too are sacrificing it. They're parang okay. Well, the honestly, the easiest thing to do is just to fire people and just 
work with a yeah. skeletal force and then these people earn 100% of the wages that's the easiest thing to do eh? yeah but, but like parang we can't do that because it's inhumane it's um madudole pa kami <laughs> diba? like, yeah. uh, it, and uh, but at the, at the end of the day also we 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 care for them like uh, when i say that it's it, i we really mean it it's tough when you have to talk to your staff they uh, you know what what the most commonly used phrase by them naman na I don't know if it's uh, heard all throughout no? they always say naintindihan naman po namin mm-hmm. they understand also the situation yeah. they always say that when you say hey um, shorten shift ulit tayo kasi curfew is 6pm na okay lang till 5 lang it's basically half day every day and yeah. not only half day it's rotating our stuff you only need three people to operate mm-hmm. delivery and takeout you don't need yeah. your We usually employ employ like what 14 people at a time, 12 people. Yeah. Hindi <laughs> yeah. na yeah. three people na lang. How do you fit that, yaman? Na tas sisitain ka ng dole if you go under these yeah. thresholds that they've set. So parang oh my gosh. So you don't know. But yeah. if you're yeah. if you're dining in, then you can employ half of that staff, de ba? Like yeah. parang it's it's that way. you're providing opportunities also. And I know there's the stigma of like oh dining out like you're basically putting people at risk. But then the people that dine out first and foremost, the men are, you know, they know the risks. And kai papano, it really does help the business. And by helping the business, it also helps the people. So it's yeah. a huge difference like, for takeout deliveries and dining in. Um, just to you know wrap everything together. Um, We take out the deliveries. Yeah, people order, but it's super minuscule compared to dine-in sales for F&B outlets, talaga. Okay. Mm. I think, except if you know, like like Ed said, if you're built for deliveries, like pizzas and stuff, or even like yeah. a lot of home-based businesses, you know, that don't have a brick and mortar. Um, yeah. You know, that that's another issue. Like, uh, I support a lot, by the way, um, just because these people have also lost their jobs or have been furloughed or are also trying to make ends meet, but Uh, people don't realize that they don't pay rent, don't pay salaries, um, unless they hire an assistant and you know maybe also don't pay taxes. But parang it's it's different. The problems, the sets of problems are very different from an actual F and B outlet with a brick and mortar and everything in place. So it's it's ano it's 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 tough for all around. I think, yes. and people are just and the bottom line are just trying to make ends meet. Right. Oh. And I respect that. Yeah. So I guess I mean one of the most pressing challenges in operating during hard lockdowns, as you mentioned, curfew also because that cuts the shifts of your staff like in yeah. mm-hmm. um, the yeah rotations pa like Ed yeah, said rotations, rotations. Um, and are there Powerful. other factors I guess I mean yeah. people don't really think about how one factor can affect you like supply chains and even the fluctuating pricings of raw materials like pork. And you have mm. to adjust. Uh, have you had any challenges with that? that that's a problem oh. if you're a commodity-based industry. Um, our biggest challenge right now is we're not like gas stations. If the world, the global prices increase, they can increase. Yeah. Uh-huh. Mm. If chicken increases, I can't all of a sudden increase my increase menu price. price. Gagalit, yeah, yeah magagalit yung mga customer. They'll yeah. be like, what, what is this? They'll be yeah. like, eh, nagtaas yung manok eh. They'll be like, oh, okay, we'll go to ganito na lang. We'll go to yeah. ganyan na lang. Diba? So, yeah. it has affected us also with, when, yeah. when it comes to that point. I think the better question here is like, because, for example, like you mentioned pork. That's uh, Africa. It, it is a swine flu, diba? And yeah. that's not necessarily related to COVID. Um, it's just an unfortunate event that it happened. Um, and so prices of pork increased. I think for us, with our commodities being coffee, um, Know, fruits and vegetables and sugars and you know, if you have food bread and stuff like that it's it's more of inflation um and the that's the has increased yeah you know, but it's really more i would say it's more for us it's it's more inflation talaga. like okay last year's gdp was not so good so this year's inflation is higher um there's a lot more debt last year and so therefore they're gonna tax us more you know syntax about mga ganun. yeah so But like we're bracing ourselves for these things on top of like parang our um, yearly bills and permits that we need to renew and, and take care of. For us, the main problem there, and it does affect us, is like do we increase our prices now that it's a pandemic and people aren't really going out? Or do we take the hit, you know, like parang take less of a profit 
and we've reverted to I mean we, that's what we've done by the way we've we haven't increased prices but it it it's we don't feel it as much now just because we're really trying to um you know to open to have some stability um as as we've discussed um but it will we will feel it for sure in the next one two years because like my gosh like <laughs> all right there's going to be taxes are going to increase like we <laughs> that's 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 also what a lot of people don't realize by the way what when we get all these like 500 million dollar uh, grants from the World Bank, it's like okay, well, what, on one on one side, like around, it's great that we have this money to spend, but the thing is, we don't see the effects. Like we never see um, these loans, these grants reach us. Like around, it, it's it's just, it's just pretty sad. But the the flip side is also who's paying for it? Of course, the citizens are paying for it. The like, parang it, it, and it's going to be paid for in in, in by taxes. So that that part we haven't seen yet, but for sure we're gonna feel it in the next three years, five years, mm-hmm. etc. And we'll definitely have to raise prices in that time frame within one to three years. So it's tough. It's how do you weigh it? About like, parang, do you shun people away by new prices, or do you just take the hit and you know just try to make things work? And people, yeah. people are know they've been saying, hey, we can't raise prices now. You know, you can. because of the pandemic. Yeah. You can. You can. It's tough. Parang yeah. it, it's humanitarian also. Na, oh, ngayon ka pa nagtaas ng presyo. Kung mm-hmm. kailan mm-hmm. ganito, no? So, um, ipit talaga. As much as yun nga, I, I, I see a lot of people saying, you know, all these entrepreneurs, these business people just, you know, want their businesses to survive. No, we want we want people to survive. Trust me. It's not about the business. I, I'll be honest, and this is the first time I'm saying this out in public. We actually have to sell some of our brands already, no, especially the homegrown brands, because we don't have enough anymore to sustain it. Um, it's been a year. There's another lockdown. Um, can't. It's not. It's not. And uh, in Tagalog, hindi na makatarungan trying to sustain this business, no. So we we do what we must. The good thing is, and I I speak for myself, for David, and a lot of other entrepreneurs is. We're young enough, naman, to rebuild, pa, diba? We're not. That, we're not that's, even, diba? Yeah. So that's the thing. That's that's you and I, right? So knock on yeah. wood. Like, I'm looking for wood then beside me. Like <laughs> the business is closed. Um, you know, people like Ed and myself, like uh, we are young enough. There will be opportunities in the future. Yeah. But then again, the diba? like, parang it goes back. Like, not all. How about how not about our guys? No, how about our guys? What happens to them, diba? Yeah. Yeah. It, 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 just, it, 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 it goes back to our people it goes back it goes back mm. to our, our colleagues yeah. and for me in part, for me like um that's the reason why my partners and I you know go to work try to find solutions yeah. I mean that's the worst thing, the worst thing that can happen is that it closes and that's not such a bad thing mm. it just stops the bleeding honestly <laughs> yeah. yeah it's more of like um, as you said this year's lockdown is very different and it tougher decisions have to be made. So mm. how how did last year's lockdown differ from this year's? Like what I'm sure your um foresight last year is very different from this year because there's that sense of there was still hope, I guess, last year. Yeah. Now it's a different context. So how do you think it's differing this year and what are your plans for it? Like mm-hmm. what would you need mm. this year compared to last? It's it's more frustrating this year, you no, know, the lockdown and everything that's happening because we already know the solutions because we've seen other countries, we've seen how they made it work, you know. Um, we know the solutions. We we know how to get there. It's just really, it can't start from. Man, I don't want to say this, but it can't start from us all the time. Right? There has to be from the, from the private. From the private sector. Yeah, exactly. From the yeah. private sector. I didn't I just didn't wanna, you know, get too political with what I was no, gonna no, say. That's true, it's true. Yeah. It, yeah. Yeah. We we it has to stem from leadership. Last year, twenty twenty, you know how it was different? We were all lost all over the world. You turn on the yeah. news, you go exactly. online. Yeah. No one Everybody. knew what was happening. Yeah. Everybody was lost. We're just waiting and... on the vaccines. Yeah, that's no it. One it's a vaccine race. 
Yeah, eh, ngayon may vaccine na. You already know dapat na, you know, mag-alfresco na lang lahat ng resto. Nakainis pa niyan, before the lockdown, a lot of restaurants have already invested in alfresco. Yeah. It's not cheap, ah. Um, buying all these huge ass umbrellas, trying mm-hmm. to move all of their furniture outdoors. It's not cheap. So, biglang two weeks lang, biglang, okay, alfresco, no more. Uh, lockdown tayo. Oh man, that's tough. So, it's more frustrating this year. That's what mm-hmm. I would say. Yeah. Good for you. David. Yeah, definitely. I mean, you know, like, again, last year, it, it wasn't just the Philippines that was going through the pandemic. It was the whole world and the whole world had the same solutions, which was stay home, but wash your hands, sanitize, um, and, and stuff like that. And then it was just a race for the vaccines. But now that the vaccines are here, yeah. round two na naman. But the thing is, it's so different because like before when we start when we just started the lockdown it was like a thousand two thousand cases max now we're at like eight to fifteen thousand per day like where do you draw the line i do understand it like where, where do you draw the line of like parang, hey we gotta go through this again because there's no choice eh? like you look at the numbers they're probably more by the way versus like parang, well we need to move on we need to just live with this because we've been doing this for a year and we can't sustain it. It's, it's, that's where the frustrating part is for me is because like, we just can't sustain this, this, um, this pace because there's, there's, it's, it's like parang, it's not even like up and down, up and down, up and down. It's just like open and closing and just like taking away opportunities for small um, businesses such as, such as ours. You know, it, it, it's, 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 and then, and then we have to pay taxes by and all of that. <laughs> so it's like, mm-hmm. where's the the parang where's the where's the humanity in this? Like, um, you know, just recently there's like this whole like um, uh, sige, like we're gonna give out um, what is the term again? Like the US had already uh, two to three installments for the Bela. citizens. What, what was it? Stimulus? Sorry, what stimulus? Yeah, stimulus packages. Stimulus, now, like, parang, yeah. now we have na tayo. 1,000 pesos. <laughs> like, no. wow. I know. I was like, parang wow. Cornetto, no? Parang Cornetto. Okay. 1,000 pesos. No? <laughs> so, parang, I don't know. Like, parang, it's, it, it's an effort, sure, but like, I understand, and I also understand that it's not cheap and there's, you know, a, a hundred million Filipinos to take care of, but like, at the same time, like, when's this gonna end? You know, we should have, I don't know, I just feel like we should have planned better also. So it's, it's, it's just, it's, it's, it's frustrating in that aspect. Like it's, it's, it's just having to go through it again. But in general, you know, I'm a pretty positive and optimistic person and so are the people around us. So I guess, well, yeah, no choice. We just have to roll with the punches and it's, it's not pivoting at this point. Eh? It's just doing everything and anything, you know. I think all restaurants um, have pivoted na at some point. You know, exactly. exactly. So it's just really doing everything and anything. Like, for example, autos close. Um, but then, you know, like, what can we, now we're trying to think like, okay, well, what do we do while we're closed or for when we decide to open? It's, it's all of that planning. It's all of that planning. And so we're talking about, okay, maybe we should like ramp up merchandise. Maybe we can do like pre-orders for shirts that we plan to release. And it's been a while man, since we planned that. Um, maybe we can do, you know, online things again, like the f- in the first lockdown, like we did a lot of those things, uh, but this time trying to monetize that. So it's it's a lot of it's just doing everything and anything really, and it's it's tiring, you know, having to to chase um, sales, you know, and you know just to just to stay afloat. Yeah, it, it does and become these, tiring. These moves will still not equal the sales we had before. Kaya no, absolutely not. Namin. Yeah, it's yeah. really just Kaya like. Kaya 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 Literally, yeah. my words last night were, okay, so there's this opportunity, there's this opportunity, there's this opportunity. That's rent. But man, I can't sustain this. Like, that's what I told my team. Yep. Like, we got to do something. Like, come on. Come on, guys. Like, I'm trying to squeeze everyone's brains for ideas. And it's, it's tough because, again, I just got my sales now, so curator. <laughs> <laughs> Should I tell you? <laughs> up to you. This is popped up. Sige, I'll tell you. Sige, like parang on a normal day, our sales are about 20k for coffee and then mm-hmm. another 40-50k for um for cocktails. That's like you know 50, a good yeah. 50 to 75 on a uh, that's average in a day, right? About 50 to 75. Mm-hmm. That's not big by the way, for a restaurant, especially. Today it's 6k. 
<laughs> with five uh, stats pa rin. Around the same. I, I, I yeah. won't lie. Those numbers are yeah. very similar to what we produce. So I just saw like, it. Yeah, I'm not yeah. surprised with what David said. 6,061 like, pesos and 86 cents. <laughs> yeah. With five staff pa rin. So I have to talk to the team later. At this point, like, yeah. you can't even think long term. You just have to get through the, the day sale. Alam mo, we set a number. And for us, it's like, no, 10K. 10K, five staff, um, you know, reduced rent. We can make it work. And when we reach 10K, we're always so happy and relieved. I mean, it's, it's, it's always like, it's, 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 always, it's always a relief. Imagine what, 10,000? That's before, that's peanuts. It's nothing. Like, parang, you're not going to survive. But then now that mm-hmm. we're, you know, we're down and like, parang, there's a pandemic, you know, thinking about that, when I just, what I just said, that 10,000, you're not going to survive. Now it's like 10,000, we're so happy. Like, parang, we're going to stay afloat for like, no, I, I mean, like, parang, for a while. It's, 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 it's pretty nuts. It's, it's, that's the reality, honestly. Yeah, the the industry has reached a point of exhaustion. That's why we've been so quiet na lang. Na parang, but that's the worst part. Eh. You don't want to be ano eh, be forced into silence na lang na parang you you hate saying ano pa magagawa namin. Diba? You, you hate saying that. But it's been so tiring and exhausting. One year, you were running off of adrenaline pa. Eh, na parang, mm. Come on, come on, let's do this, let's do this. This adrenaline runs out, and right now at this point, a lot of restos have been, oh, wala na. Parang, let's just, yung nakaslump na a lot of our shows. Yeah. yeah. Dati we were like, hmm, kaya pa to, you know, yeah. let's, go on, okay. let's go and talk, let's you, give seminars, let's go you really have to. You really have to amp yeah. yourself up every day. Yeah. Yeah, it's now no it's joke. Like, <laughs> ganun na talaga. It's a lot of, yeah. <laughs> so, it's, like, really, it's, it's, it's fun. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I guess... But, and I have to... I have, just because I saw my sales now, I have to reiterate that liquor bans do not help. They really don't. Like, we've literally had to yeah. say no to orders from place, LGUs that have liquor mm-hmm. bans. Paranaque, San Juan, Mandaluyong, mm-hmm. like, um, et cetera. Like, I can't... It's, it's not on top of my mind. The only ones that don't have liquor bans are those that don't believe in it, which is Makati and Tagig, which is amazing, by the way. Because Kai Papana used my, my sales. But, like... Mm-hmm. Um, it's 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 that also, eh? like and, and okay, people are already at home. You're still banning liquor. <laughs> like I get why liquor is not evil. I mean, for in people's mind, it's like oh, you have liquor, people are gonna gather together. Not necessarily true. I have, if you see my collection, like parang of alcohol, I have like hundreds of bottles in like in, in a shelf at home. I have not op- I do not drink at home. <laughs> I don't yeah. know. Like, no, 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 yeah. Same here. Same here. I, I'm, a, I'm a whiskey collector. I don't touch it by myself. Yeah. I don't know, parang, right? What's going on? It's not yeah. fun. <laughs> um, and if I, if I do drink, it's like, okay. Yeah. And I don't, by the way, the whole... That's my silver lining. I don't drink at all now. Like, if I do, it's like one glass of wine. That's it. How? Ano, is that going to kill someone? <laughs> parang, no. David and I also are... We have business permits. So... Mm. And al- liquor permit. So we have another layer of We're paying for that pa. Yeah, either that and I uh, know we can't just serve pa to minors. People think uh, we're pabaya. No way, mahuli kami. You're out. Mm. Huge mm. penalty. So there's yeah. another layer to that pa. So may bawal minors, we're policing that because we're going to liquor ban pa. Like, wag na lang. Ano bang yeah. gusto niya mangyari? <laughs> diba? Nang eh. It's hard. It's just, it's, yeah. How much, guess, piv- how much more pivoting can you yeah, do? Yeah, can you that? do really? And I yeah. guess I wanted to ask also, if do you guys have friends who operate businesses outside of this bubble? Like, I'm sure... Yeah. Other, yeah, like, I wanted to ask, GCQ what Silla. are the unique challenges for these restaurants outside of Metro Manila, Cavite, Rizal? Because they're yeah. eh. Cebu, Davao. Um, and... You know what? Yeah. Like, yeah, definitely they're, they're together. Um, I, I would say... Places like Baguio and La Union, for example. I mean, this, these are always like the hot spots because they're just like four hours away, right? They've also taken a hit for sure, like uh, in terms of sales and whatnot. But at the same time, they're lucky because there's GCQ. Eh? It's very different. It's basically our life before MECQ, which is uh, face mask, face shield. Okay, like go out, there's curfew, um, but you can dine in 50% capacity, um, be safe. 
it's like that. And you know, their numbers are still maintained at the minimum. Um, I guess and the tourists. So? Like, you know, I mean, and I'm sure if you, add, there are tourists also, but at the same time, locals are able to fuel, you know, their their daily. Their, how do you say it? What they need to meet on a daily basis. There's enough. Um, you know, more so pa like Cebu and Davao, which is like a plane ride away, de right? their their own city. And so is Baguio, and so is the Union. It's just that parang a lot of the businesses that have opened there do rely on tourists from Manila. You know, it's it's it, but it's a huge it's a huge piece taken out of their um, their pie basically. But they're still making ends meet, and at least kahit pa paano they're surviving. So mm-hmm. you know, I wouldn't say they're thriving, but they're doing a lot better than us. I mean, number one, they're open, <laughs> diba? Okay. Even so, in ano, um, mga Boracay and Palawan. Uh, oh, shit. Relative... Sorry. Like, Boracay, <laughs> Kawawa. No way na dito. Oh, Atensya, no? My God. They're so Kawawa. Exactly. That's what I was going to say. I, dude, they just bought 30 kilos. Yeah. So they bought 30 kilos of coffee from us for Sunnyside Cafe and Little Wave Cafe. Thinking that mm. Holy Week will have a small boom of tourism. Because oh, it's naman. been picking up, diba, Boracay? Yeah, but then, it has, yeah. sobrang sakto, before Holy Week, I mean, see you, bang. So, na? Like, they're back to square one. And their people yeah. are here, by the way. They're at the grid. All their, a lot of mm. their people are from Boracay are either here or they went back to Boracay. Then they had to close again. But so, yeah. But yung, yun, like, like, so, yung, and sorry, I'd like to cut you, but like, um, no, no, Boracay, it's the same, Palawan, same sentiment. In Boracay, Palawan, that's, that relies heavily on tourism. Locals, yeah, I don't exactly. know, can sustain it. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, but you have the, relatives the local, there? Yeah, uh, I'm related to some people in Boracay. They're saying that uh, it's tough because if you say locals, the locals aren't there naman to make the Spend. economy thrive. They're usually, yeah. the employees, they're usually the employees and the employers naman there. Yeah. So it's tough. It's tough. I, I know people naman who are stuck there because they don't fly out of those islands. So yeah. they've been showing Chele, their ID in Cebu. story. Chele, Chele, in Cebu. I know, I know this friend of mine. Parang ginagawa niya. Oh, since I'm stuck on the island, she's been helping the vendors ng mga yung mga sa Trinket, the beach. Oh, yeah. sino may gusto? Propose siya sa IG niya. Oh, pag-uwi ko ng Manila, one oh, okay. way flight na. Oh. Yeah, uh, that's what she's been doing. That's nice. Yeah. Yeah. That's nice. Because like, so there. yeah, that's, a, that's another aspect nga. No? Like, parang, of course, when you're there as a tourist, like, you'd think mm-hmm. na parang, oh, ang ganda. Like, it, walang tao. But then you think about all the businesses Parang, yeah. that are trying to reopen or have reopened there's just not enough for everyone not enough people not enough tourists and you know parang credit to DOT you know they I, I think they tried talaga like uh, to reopen the economy um, with all of like the restrictions loosening up and stuff it's just that I don't know it's a it, it's it's just unfortunate lang that <laughs> cases had to raise again and in, it's hand in hand, you know, tourism and um, and these things. I, I would assume it's a, a tough nut, you know, to crack talaga. But mm-hmm. hopefully we can get over it. Yeah, so I, I wanted also to ask, um, obviously, uh, the current state of our COVID-stricken country is quite dire at the moment. And mm-hmm. I guess what does it mean for the local restaurant industry this time around? And what kind of support would you guys need this time? Like private, government, um, public support to help see this through? Yeah, I wouldn't say the government didn't give anything to our industry. They actually gave one thing, which is the SME, uh, sorry, the, the cap dole. Remember that? Like it was, it was basically like a, it was kind of like a stimulus that they gave out. Mm-hmm. It was like 8,000 pesos in two tranches. So in our we applied, fortunately, for all our staff. Not everybody was as, was as fortunate. Um, and so they were able to get 16,000 pesos, which is a big help, by the way. We we're very grateful for that. But apart from that, honestly, there's nothing. And I'm at a point where we cannot rely on the government, to be honest. Um, so mm. we, we only... Uh, uh, but the LGU, that's a different story. Um, LGUs, right now, I've... You know, I've again, like I... So I, I, I kind of went viral <laughs> a few weeks ago for a post I did, and <laughs> kind of helped help with that. Um, 
And one of my questions is like, where are the vaccines I just, at? I just laughed. <laughs> yeah, I just <laughs> Thank laughed. you. <laughs> Man, I mean, like, yeah. But you know. what was my, my one of my issues are like, okay, well, there's still no mass testing. There's still no proper contact tracing. Um, and where are the vaccines at? And I actually got a troll who asked me, like, parang Google mo nga yung ba- kung ilan yung natetest bansa natin sa, ano, sa isang araw. Like, in my head is like, parang, oh, I wanted to say, are you kidding me? Like, parang, you think that people are, you know, all these tests, like, let's say today, 12,000 cases. I'm not saying it's 12,000 today. I haven't checked. But like, all 12,000 people are free and we're forced to mass, uh, are, and we're actually mass tested. Like, the, do you actually know the meaning of mass testing? Mm-hmm. That, 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 that's what I wanted to reply. What I said was like, parang I, I, what I just said was, I imagine that other countries don't have as much cases anymore or, or as much people getting tested because the ramping up vaccinations then sad face so i just replied to it with sarcasm but you know like where the vaccines are but then to my surprise again and it's a good surprise like we we see lgus um mobilizing and you know like i've i've, I've known I, I know people from the general public that have already gotten vaccinated you know senior citizens um pwds um but no general public after that yet so you know i think we're in that sense, the, the, the you know the LG some LGUs are already doing a pretty good job. Granted, you know it's not um, Moderna, AstraZeneca is already running out, <laughs> or or have has run out. Um, it's Sinovac, but still it's something. So I think it's that's the only way that they can help right now. Ramp up vaccinations, that's for sure. And then um, I and also, we we need to work on proper mass testing. Talaga. I know some LGUs do it like. Um, the gig, for example, has like free PCR testing on certain days. So, if you know if everybody can do it, then that would be better. Um, contact tracing. I think when we think contact tracing, we think okay, a health declar- declaration form upon entering um, private premises and stuff like that. And you know, come and we try our best, like um, yeah, to do that. Like you know, knock on wood. Like we haven't had a case where somebody told us that oh, I'm positive. You need to tell everybody who went on this particular day to you know have themselves checked we haven't had that but you know it's there at least but what i mean is like china for example um you're familiar with wechat their app mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. so so there it's both magaling and scary at the same time because they're able to track every single person at any given time um and i can't really like um put this into words um, just because I don't know like the full details, but you know, the, you know, like it, it's proper contact tracing is my point. But yeah, like uh, that's from the government's end. Uh, as far as like I, the, uh, the private sector goes, like to support local businesses really. Like um, there's I know there's a lot, but you know, like whatever you know, whatever your your, your means can handle, then you know it, it goes a long way. To, like like it, keeps the business afloat and it also helps with people's livelihoods. Um, I think that's it. Is, is, is that long? Is this the private yeah. sector and the government? Yeah, and your customers. Yeah. Yeah. All it's really yeah. just that. It's just su- support within your means. We understand. Mm. Um, but yeah, yeah, just please continue to continue the support. I mean, we already appreciate it, but um, yeah, please continue. <laughs> I, I would I would love for our industry to get priority uh yeah. you no know, when it comes to the vaccines just because of the amount of people we come into contact with on a daily yeah. basis. I so, think I think we're frontliners too. Yeah. Yeah. Like I, I mean our people. Yeah. I, think, I think they're frontliners as well. Yeah, I, I mean I, as long as they're not serving they're... Lugal, as long as they're not serving Lugal. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> but, but you know, it it we, we face a lot of people every day from suppliers to uh, customers and all that. So sana talaga, we get moved up. Um, the Resto PH Association, there's an association now of restaurants and all that, business owners. Um, they're mobilizing because we haven't seen yet a proper, I know, within the industry, a proper dissemina- info dissemination campaign about the safety of vaccination there are too many people, especially within our staff, who don't want to get vaccinated. Mm. 
Very because true. of the because of the ano before the you know what happened before, de ba? There was a smear campaign against vaccines before. Now we we're trying our hardest to to tell our our ano staff, our employees, hey, you need to get vaccinated, guys. Come on, for our ano business to survive. Um, sagot naman namin, <laughs> de ba? Kung di sagot ng LGU nyo, we're required to pay for it as employers. Diba? So, you know, guys, get vaccinated. Um, that, that's one thing. We really want... It's not it's not for get your vaccinated, you're good. Ah. Diba? It's not like that. People have to understand that. But it's still another layer. And for me, it's a better layer than a stupid face shield, which I hate yeah. because I had, to, I had to get glasses during this quarantine because of all these Zoom meetings. Ang hirap na may glasses ka na may face shield ka pa. So, it's been tough. It's been tough. Yeah. But okay. speaking of vaccinations, though, like um, I actually just got vaccinated, like flu shot, chara pneumococcal, like lifetime. You know, on lifetime, it's not recommended between two to sixty-five years old. But you know, like like you said, as a layer of protection while waiting yeah. on the vaccine. No, it's, it's good. I got the flu shot yeah. last year too. No start. Yeah. Ng, chara pneumococcal, ah, pneumonia din. Like take ah, now. No flu lang, kasi sabi yeah, ko nga. Bala na. I don't even understand why I have to take it. I'm an adult yeah. now. Pero go. Why yeah. not? No. Yeah, yeah. It's ano eh. Nakakapraning naman talaga eh. And, you know, like, of course, I think if people could stay home, uh, I think they would. You know, if they could afford it. Like, that, I really think, I think everyone would. It's just that not you have to put food on the table. Yeah. Not everyone is as comfortable as us. You know, you know all three plus um, our administrator, hello, like who's handling like this um this stream, we're all at home, so not everybody is this lucky, right? So it's it, it's it's it, I think it's just that speed up vaccinations. Then we just pray, yeah. I guess, that um cases lessen and that we're able to manage it this time around. So I guess my last question for you guys is um well as frustrating as things are right now. What kind of mindset or attitude are you guys bringing into this year, like knowing what's going on? What are your if what are your plans for 2021 if there are any? Mm. Or is it at a day at a time? Like what is Yeah. What is it uh, It's this exactly the same as last year, really. Like um we're 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 definitely um it's in the same situation, if not worse. So it's just trying to, yeah, it's really trying to survive. And when I say that, it's um, try, it's it's day to day and it's weekly in the sense that we need to abide by the law. So if the law says no dining, then we're, we have no choices. You know, take out deliveries and curbside pickup. If they say it's dining, then okay, tomorrow we're we're going to do dining right away if they allow it. I mean, like it's it's. It's um it's day to day and weekly in that scenario or in that point of view, but then the rest of it is like okay, well, how can we survive really? Like uh, we're just chasing sales, like we we can't just wait for people to come in and support us. Like how can we entice people to support us more? So, I don't know. It's, this is where things like um, bundles. Um, you know those like little gift bundles come in, into effect or uh, in my other job which is uh, with Full Circle Craft Distillers where I'm their elixir emissary short of saying brand ambassador like it's really going business to consumer even if you know our sales aren't there so it's like okay maybe we can do like cocktail workshops like it's, it's really anything and everything um, unfortunately like we really have to hustle mm-hmm. while everything is still like this and when things get better, I guess we just um, decide then. But when, when things get better, like it, we're just gonna run through the motions, and because yeah. it's mm-hmm. only going to get better. But like, you know, who expected this? But like, parang na from March to April, um, you know, the the cases increased by I don't know how many times fold. Then I don't think anybody ex- <laughs> expected that, talaga. So. Right now, it's back to square one for sure. We're we're back to survival mode. Um, but there's one important thing I you know, I realized during the the pandemic and during this lockdown 
um, especially this lockdown part too. Uh, we the role that we play within the ecosystem, no, within our, our society, it's for the best way to annoy. To oh man, this is gonna sound cheesy, but <laughs> this, oh, yeah. this this is the best way to you know, send love to your loved ones. Eh? It's true. Mm. Diba, when you miss your parents, dad, pinadalang kita ng sushi bake. <laughs> or dad, yeah. I sent you this, that. Uh, pinagrab ko na, don't worry about it. Diba? Um, so that's why we have to still find ways. I mean, ito na naman, same as last year, nagkaka, ano ako, flashbacks na Mother's Day is coming up again. Father's Day is coming up again. And we have to figure out safe ways of bringing food and coming together in a socially distant way na naman. Diba? Um, last year, it felt so gimmicky, but it kind of worked. This year, gagana pa ba? What we did last year, diba? making making gift packs for everyone, and then all these Zoom parties. You, you notice, yeah. no one posts their Zoom reunions anymore. Or Zoom. Mm. Zoom diba? Last year, every day, every there's a Zoom week. selfie. Yeah. yeah, There was a Zoom reunion, Zoom party. No one does it anymore. People are tired. People yeah, are people tired. Are they tired. still do Zoom. They still do Zoom, but they don't post it anymore but because they're like, well, wow, this is life now. No, it's, it's, it's a matter of fact now. So we're in survival mode, but we have to, we, we still have to come together still. Uh, I like it, the coming together part. I dislike the, um, the blaming part, the blame game. You don't want yeah. to keep on blaming the people in charge, but sometimes you feel so frustrated. And it's, yeah, yeah, like what David said. Eh, wala. Ano gagawin natin? They wait for yeah. the next announcement again. Oh, pwede na ulit dine in. Al fresh ko lang. Oh, pwede na ulit ganito. 20% lang, 30% lang. But I just hope that people understand that hindi naman kami pabaya. We are, yeah. our, our industry is equipped to be clean. It's equipped to be sanitized. It's equipped to be healthy because ganun eh, we're serving food eh. We, we've always been parang medical frontliners. We know how to sanitize. People don't know the sanitation we go through every day. Pre-COVID pa lang to, ah. no, Just to make sure that everything is clean. Now, that there's COVID, we actually know naman what we're doing. So, if you do decide to take the risk, go out. You know, we're not going to force you. But if you do take the risk, we will take care of you. No, I, I know Alfresco has been a huge, you know, dapat matagal na yan, yung required Alfresco. But not everyone can do it kasi... That's the mm. problem, especially kung mall-based. Uh, there's no alfresco when you're in the mall. Now, if you do have the chance or opportunity or, you know, the means to do it, you have to do it. That's really the way na habang kumakain ka, nakababahing mask mo, transmission is kept to a minimum. So there. Mm-mm. Okay. So, I guess that's about it. And thank you for sharing your experiences because I'm sure it's difficult, but people want to know how to support the local their favorite local businesses anyway so yeah yeah thank you again chef ed bukia and david ong for joining us on episode four of let's talk food and thank you for sharing also um your thoughts and insights on what is currently happening within the local restaurant industry so i'm steph Ronaldo again lifestyle entertainment and food reporter for rappler and thank you all for your time and for watching. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you for having us. Yes, Bye. Thank you.